which is Guns N' Roses reunion tour so far. So April, we are now in May. April has happened. They have played um, two shows at Coachella. They played two shows in Las Vegas. They played two shows in Mexico. And they played, um, I believe they played a small show at the Troubadour um, in LA, which was the opening. And so far, reviews have been fantastic. Axel sounding fantastic. And he broke his foot. And for that reason, um, Axel has had to play... Um, we, he actually played all of those shows, apart from um, the one at the Troubadour, in Dave Grohl's throne, meaning he he's broken his foot, he's broken like a metatarsal bone, and he can't put any weight on the foot. So he's had to perform there on the red throne and being unable to move, but still singing his heart out sat down, which takes a lot of difficulty because with rock singers, they have to stand up to project properly and hit certain notes. It shows you how fantastic Axel's voice is sounding at the moment, that he has the ability to do that. It obviously means, though, that Slash standing next to him with his guitar doesn't look as smooth as it would if Axel was running around being energetic. Yeah. But in terms of the sound of the band and... Um, the way the shows have been going so far and audience reaction and the critics, it's been absolutely fantastic. And um, what do you reckon? I, yeah, basically everything you just said pretty much sums it up. Like for all the stuff, you know, that people were scared about, I think we are actually starting to see more or less what we touched on with ACDC, but I think we're actually starting to see, you know, a reborn like a reformed Guns N' Roses more than anything else, because we're seeing the band actually not only doing, you know, as good as they ever were expected to be, but also as good as their early shows before they started getting cocky and missing out on stuff by minimum of two hours. We're seeing Axel in particular trying to keep to his guns, and trying to make sure that they're all together working to put on a good show, remembering that the band did have issues that they all needed to overcome, this could be the start of something new and much better. Yes, and um, since then, they do have a large, I believe it's 26-date US tour in June, July, and August of this year. Yeah. Hopefully Europe to follow, and that would be very exciting. You and the, I are definitely getting tickets for that. Oh, for sure. The, the one thing though, that's missing for me, um, from what I've seen, even looking at the band on stage, I know Axel's in a throne, so it looks a bit strange anyway, but even when he's out of his throne, they need, they need Izzy Stradlin and Steven Adler in that band. They need the classic five. Um, we've obviously mentioned on previous episodes of the podcast that Duff, Axel and Slash are the front three that is the reunion, but the other two guys are available, you know, and we don't we don't know the full politics behind why they're not in the band. We have ideas that we have mentioned yeah. in previous episodes, but the fact of the matter is, these shows so far have gone fantastically. Once Axel, well, I presume his foot's mended by now to perform in ACDC, but once that's happened, come on guys, we need the five of you, because... In a business point of view, and a lot of people think at Guns N' Roses have got back together through money and through obviously making up, the project gets even bigger. It gets even bigger just with two members. And we've mentioned with yeah. ACDC the importance of each member. Yeah. The Guns N' Roses reunion in 2016 needs to have the five of them. Yeah. Fans have been waiting a very yeah. long time for this. Things so far have gone so great that things can only get better. Yeah, Bring back Izzy Stradlin on rhythm, Stephen Adler on drums, if not Matt Sorum, which seems highly unlikely at the moment. Is there a reason for that unlikelihood? They haven't explained. But at the end of the day, you'd rather have the Appetite Era, the original drummer, Stephen Adler. I would say that I'm perfectly satisfied with both Matt and Stevie, but at the same time, you know, for me... What really matters if I had to have a toss-up between the two, it had to be Dizzy, because, you know... What, Dizzy Reed? He's on no, keyboards. No, Izzy. Oh, Izzy Stradling, yeah. right. Yeah, Izzy. Yeah, basically, Izzy, I would think that whatever the reason is for him not being in there, it's probably more down to the fact that he is 
You know, you never really would have guessed it too much with the fact he was able to get up on there and perform in the first place, but the guy really is a stoic mystery, isn't he? He is, yes. So, you know, I think from all the stuff that actually happened back in the GNR early era before they all left, Axe all by himself, I think he is really just being what I would call quintessentially British about this, in the sense he's being a pessimist. He is... I wouldn't say it's totally down to Axel, the fact that they're not there. Like, we don't know. Axel is the obvious target. He is the easy target to blame. Well, it for w- why is he and Stephen are not, are not there? Well, yeah, I know that. But what I mean is, you know, Axel was not the main intention of that comment to be you know, the target for the gun. But, you know, I think that with all the stuff that has happened, which we have to admit does revolve mostly around him, Mm -hmm. you know, Izzy would actually be the ultimate person to want to keep away, because he is a stoic mystery, he really does seem shy, he seems, as I said, quintessentially British about it, he is probably acting very pessimistic about it, and his name's in the headlines a lot at the moment because of the Guns N' Roses reading and him not being there that it's making him feel uncomfortable. Yeah, but like it is just strange. Like there isn't really any indication that he is outwardly making even an implication that he wants to be away, but at the same time, you know, if there's an open door for him and he hasn't walked through it. Why is that the case? Yep, and as for Stephen Adler, he very much wants to be a part of this. He said this in many interviews. Um, his band, which I believe are just called Adler, they, mm. they used to be Adler's Appetite. I'm not sure. I think it's just Adler at the moment. They've been playing Guns N' Roses songs. He said to Eddie Trunk in an interview that he wants to be there, but he doesn't <laughs> think Axel Slash and Duff want him there because he's not cool enough. And not a good enough drummer and not clean and sober enough when apparent when apparently he is. Apparently he's on the top of his game at the moment and he is ready. You know, like Axel's been reborn. Apparently Stephen Adler has been as well. But yeah. we, we want him there for the sake of you know, Stephen Adler has had a lot of problems in his career with drugs and alcohol and messing things up. Which is and prob- it's a com- complete mess. However, he is yeah. in many ways an unsung hero. Yeah. He is an unsung hero. He was their original drummer on you know, appetite, and he was also the guy that, you know, he really is just a brilliant drummer when you take a look at some of the footage of what he did, and it is a sad thing not seeing him there. With Matt Sorum, they have a solid replacement, and I don't see any real reason to get uptight about that yeah. stuff, but at the same time, you know, I would be happy just with Izzy being back in the band, and with either of the two drummer options, it wouldn't bother me too much, but give him what he deserves. And if he deserves a chance, give it to him. Yeah, and at the moment, by the way, on drums, they've got Frank Ferrer. And on league, on rhythm guitar, um, they currently have Richard Fortas. And the other member who we haven't mentioned, well, I mentioned brief, very briefly earlier, was Dizzy Reed, who's yeah. obviously been in the band since the early 90s on keyboards. Yeah. Um, and, as well, they've actually got another keyboard player who joined in April last month. Um, I can't remember a second name, but her first name's Melissa, so they've now they've got second keyboardists. Yeah. Um, so they've now essentially got a band of seven members, and three of them were around in the 80s, four of them 90s with Dizzy Reed, and... Yeah, we're praying that um, Izzy Stradlin, Stephen Adler, or Matt Sorum can return to the band. Going back to Guns N' Roses' performances in April, um, sounded fantastic. And actually, you know, I was talking about Axel as having to sit on the throne, which Dave Grohl kindly offered. Just yeah. to make this clear, by the way, um, last year Dave Grohl broke his leg whilst touring with the Foo Fighters, and he designed this custom-made throne for him to perform on, which I actually had um, the pleasure of seeing Milton Keynes bowl. I saw Dave Grohl playing in the throne. Yeah. Now, of course, you would rather see him not play in the throne, but it was still fascinating to see it moving around and stuff. And I don't know whether Axel said, can I use it, or Dave Grohl kindly offered one way. Um, it, it's an, it was a great idea for Axel, because the, they could have cancelled those shows. Axel Rose has broken his foot. They could yeah. have cancelled um, the shows in Las Vegas 
and show Coachella. Must go on. And the show must go on because yeah. of Dave Grohl's brilliant thinking of creating that throne. Yeah, indeed. And it is just what it is, really. Like, I think what this really shows is that, you know, rock stars really are prepared to keep going at it because they actually... They want to make the fans happy, especially if they do have issues with, you know, their legacy. They don't want to throw everything away because there are some artists that suffer permanently from that kind of damage. And there are others that somehow they may, you know, have a few fans knocking them off, but they don't knock them off to a point where they completely forget about them. Yes. Um, However, when Guns N' Roses have been playing... November Rain, which obviously features Axel on piano, he does get down on the piano and perform. Yeah. And I saw footage of Guns N' Roses playing, I believe it was the first night um, in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, playing November Rain, it was beautiful. And Axel was actually singing in tune. This is the best Axel Rose. This is the most, it seems to me like, well, once his foot's repaired... This is the most together Axl Rose seems to have been since the 1980s yeah. in terms of being organised, singing in tune, being, you know, he, like I said, he seems like a reborn guy. Yeah. Now, if Axl Rose screws all this up, it wouldn't surprise you just because it's him. However, if he keeps it together, you know, his reputation will change and he will actually win fans back to the point where... Fans he let down will now pay money to go and see him in yeah. either Guns N' Roses or ACDC. And more fans will pay if, as we mentioned before, they get the classic five back. Yeah, indeed. And, yeah, well, remind me, not counting Chinese democracy, how many studio albums have GNR released? Five. Yeah, I was thinking five. That has yeah, been. Guns N' Roses. I mean, sorry, Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. GNR Lies. GNR Lies. The spaghetti. Use, your, use Your Illusion 1 and 2 and The Spaghetti Incident. Yeah, and they also have a live album, but that doesn't count as studio. They also have a Greatest Hits album, but that doesn't count as studio. Yeah, and it is just really, really good knowing that, you know, for the albums they did release, they ended up making, you know, a hundred million. I'm hoping that with what they actually do have, especially their appeal, like their uncanny appeal to people that don't even know jack shit about them. Mm -hmm. We can hopefully see them doing much better and making up for lost time. I agree, and... You know, it's, it's interesting just how under the radar this has been. Yeah. What I mean is step by step, because by the time April came along and they played these shows, I was like, well, this has happened quick and not much has been confirmed. <laughs> like, what they mean is, is when Axel, when, when um, Slash and Duff returned to the band, you know, it was all done, all these rumours through tweets yeah. and all sorts. And, and what they mean is, you know, let's just say a group gets back together, it's all over the newspapers. But with Guns N' Roses, it's been so under the radar. Yeah. Because you remember me saying a while back that, Guns N' Roses getting the original lineup back together will be the biggest reunion in rock history. Yeah. And so far, it hasn't been because of how under the radar it's been. And also because nothing has been said about whether this is Guns N' Roses' proper reunion for like the future. Because you don't know if Frank Ferrer is going to be playing on drums in two months' time. Yeah. It's just stuff like that, which is. Yeah, we want to see them back, but at the same time. I think actually, you know, the big guys in the band, which are Axel, Slash, and Duff, they're all very cautious about what they do. Slash and Duff, it's understandable. They've always been like that. They're good, you know, producers. They're good business people. They're great guys, really. Yep, and they, Axel, they played together in Velvet Revolver as well, which wasn't that many years ago. Yeah. So, so for that reason, they have a better chemistry and understanding than obviously their hiatus from Axel, which goes all the way back to the mid-90s. And as I was going to lead on to that, mm. Axel is actually finally trying to take a lesson out of there. Because he's also... He has stopped bullshitting, too, it seems. You could actually say, yeah. Now this is this is being slightly more negative, but yeah, you know how Izzy and maybe Axel doesn't want. Maybe Axel was happy with the current band. Maybe he's happy that all he wanted back was Slash and Duff, and that was it. Maybe that's you know it's Axel's yeah. 
we know Axel has all the rights to everything. Yeah, well, he yeah he basically owns the rights, but he. I think the problem is also Guns N' Roses. They formed and then they became a band that were virtually incompatible with each other, weren't they? Yes. You had friends, and then you had one guy that was everyone's enemy. Indeed, and this bill, this tour is being called and billed as yeah. not in this lifetime which <laughs> I think was a quote that he said in the year 2012 about there being a reunion and yeah. so the We're... thing is this is a Guns N' Roses reunion but it's not the Guns N' Roses reunion because these Guns N' Roses lead to the five of them yeah and yeah. so far we only have 60% of the original band yeah and and the other two are still alive and still playing music and could well still be a part of things. Yeah. Hopefully there will be by the time they hit the UK. Yeah, but actually on that basis, is it worth it? I mean, obviously you and I both have our preferences, but can we both be a bit more objective compared to what we just said here and even put this to you guys, our listeners? Is it worth really complaining about the fact Izzy isn't there? This is not what I was going to you know, always say, I would love the full lineup back, but given the fact that we now have the two coolest, most level-headed rock stars out there, along with a frontman who has reformed back together, would you say this is probably the best GNR is ever going to get in terms of chemistry again, or would you say that there is still more that they really should push for by getting the rest of them back together because it should just be that way? Yeah, that's well worth saying. And now that um, mm-hmm. Axu is now singing for two stadium-sized bands, <laughs> he is a very busy man to the point where... Yeah. Um, you know, the unthinkable has happened, that, um, him reuniting with Duff and Slash, and now he's singing for ACDC. All of these things, too, if you said in 2014 or something that these two big things would have happened, you'd be like, no, not, yeah. not, not that guy. Yeah. And, that, and that's, that's the interesting thing. It's, um, it's been quite the year for that man, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, essentially, he's found success where he has also found criticism. And... To be fair, if we go back to what we said earlier about ACDC and Axel, and then also relating that to KISS, ACDC have been by extension a critics band, KISS never have been, but no, Guns N' Roses... No, but KISS are a people's band. Yeah, I know. It was the same with ACDC. Guns N' Roses were the band which I think were just meant to forever personify youth rebellion, because that's probably just the psychosis in why... As we say, they've got a very widespread appeal for people, you know, that were in our position and maybe about 10 years down the line from when we get a bit older. For sure. Yeah, yeah, they're the same for our generation and people younger than us still, as they were for people in our position back when they first came out. Got you. And you know, you you obviously mentioned Kiss. Kiss's reunion taught in full makeup with the original lineup in 1996 is how you do it. Guns N' Roses so far, as good as they've been, in com- they, they don't even have a scale on what Kiss had in 96. Yeah. That's one thing I'll give Kiss their credit for. Kiss, um, when they said they were going to reunite in makeup with the original members, they did it. They played the songs people wanted and they played venues bigger than uh, they'd ever played, including yeah. Tiger Stadium in Detroit. Now, you know... That is, Kiss's reunion tour was 1996, 20 years ago. 20 years since we have Guns N' Roses. Now, in the past 20 years, I don't think there's been very few rock reunions that have leveled what Kiss have done. To be honest, I can't even think of one. I can't think of any. No. Yeah, yeah, because I'm on about full-on reunion. I'm talking, you know, some bands like the Eagles, like, got back together. That's... But people didn't leave and come back. It's not like... uh, This Guns N' Roses thing is a reunion, the same way Kisses was. uh, And yeah, I don't think any band has matched this. In terms of a rock rock and roll reunion tour, no band have matched Kiss. And the only band that have come close to matching it have been Guns N' Roses. But you need the five of them. Until Guns have the five of them. And they didn't start with the five of them. And that's that's these questions that need to be answered, really. But... Yeah, I mean... 
If anything, they may as well just call their next album GNR Lies Part 2, or the anniversary issue of that same newspaper article that the album gets its name from. So, I mean, ultimately, we don't see this as a big enough issue to get proper wah-wah about, but no, we do nonetheless see where it could cause concern for people that want more out of it. And value for money as yeah. well, because yeah. obviously tickets are a lot of money. And um, yeah, like ACDC recruiting Axel, is it money? And is this Guns N' Roses reunion about money? That's the thing, money with Axel Rose. We know it's a big thing. We know that he does have that reputation. He does seem to have reform, though. I want to give him the benefit of the doubt until he proves me wrong. And, I mean, I've always had a hit-and-miss relationship. I love what he has contributed to rock, but at the same time, I hate the fact that he isn't as chilled as I have mentioned James being. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, you saw the YouTube clip of when I met him up at Wales Comic Con, actually, that's online, and how he seems very chilled after I asked him where would actually he want to be most, Star Wars, Star Trek, or the MCU, and yeah, he's also a rock star, so he's the ideal front man for any band, and with Guns N' Roses, they could learn a lot from Ghost of the Robot. Excellent, well said. And um, just wrapping this up, we hope this tour comes to the UK either late this year or just in general in 2017. And hopefully they will be just as on form as they have been in the shows that they've done in April. Yeah, Axel, sing your heart out for both Guns N' Roses and ACDC. And be the front man you once were and in for, the 1980s. And for those about to rock, we salute you.